I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, we are still talking about the love of God. Now, we, we, we are speaking of the love of God being made manifest in your life. And it's important you understand this message. Because the reason for every message is that the word of God will enter you and you will begin to bear the fruit of the message. So the message is not complete until we see results and manifestation in your life. Everyone who preaches truth seeks this one thing. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we make requests for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me in faith right now. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now, yesterday I was talking to you about Jacob. I said, I've been, I've been for the past few weeks. Weeks? Yeah, weeks. For some reason, everything I, I look at, I'm just being directed to look at the life of Jacob. And like I told you yesterday, there's been this erroneous thought or belief that Jacob was a bad guy. He was a fraud star. You know, <laughs> he's good. And he said, oh, that's why God changed his name. Now, I was sharing something with you yesterday. I said, you don't judge a man's life before he meets God. And that's because every man must meet God. Every man. Every man will have an encounter. Pray that you have it early. I say, what about those that don't have till they die? They will still be given the opportunity to meet him. It's in scriptures. I'm not saying anything from my mind. It's in the Bible. Read the book of Revelation. Everybody that have died in this world will come back to life on this earth. Everyone who has died, they will all come back to life. And when they do, everyone will be given that opportunity. Say, really? Go read the book of Revelation. <laughs> now, maybe one day we'll do a series or a teaching on that, but, but, but that's the truth. Everybody will be given an opportunity because every man that has ever lived in this world must be tested by Christ. And, and you remember, Paul actually said, to the ones who believe, he's the chief cornerstone. To the ones who don't, who don't believe, he's a rock of offense. So everyone will be tested with Christ. Everyone. And how they respond to the testing will determine where they go. That's the judgment. So the same thing with you today. Your response to the word of God, your response to Christ determines where you go in life. Every man. Now that's why even when you look at the scriptures, God doesn't judge any man based on what he's done. God judges every man by their response to him. So you see, Adam and Eve even after they had sinned, God still spoke to them. Adam, where are you? Oh, I hid myself when I heard your voice because I was naked. God said, who told you you're naked? He had done something wrong. See, so I think I've said this on this broadcast before. I know, you know, growing up, you may have heard those testimonies. But, you know, when you relate it with today, it seems things have changed. No, things didn't change. 
it is people that have come into um, a better understanding of the person of God. So you hear preachers who say, oh, they did something wrong. And the moment they did that thing, the presence of God left them. Mm. The presence of God left you. And since then, they've not been able to recover because of one wrong thing they did. Now, as, as good as that may sound, as instructive as that may sound. In other words, so don't do anything wrong if you don't want the presence of God to depart from you. But then it's not truth. It's not truth. Now, we must take out this mentality of there. We, we don't want to preach a message that will make people take God for granted. Are you, you know, <laughs> are you the one they are taking for granted? We, when we talk like that, we feel or we make it look like God doesn't know how to handle himself. We make it look as if he preached this message, uh, it will make people bold to be committing sin. Truth is truth. And the gospel is very simple. It's not hard. It's not difficult. A man will sin because sin is in him. A man will continue in sin because he's a child of the devil. Children of God do not continue in sin. John told us that. Children of God don't practice sin. They're always uncomfortable with it. And so it becomes like a bondage until they find the truth that makes them free. But the children of the devil, they enjoy, in fact, when, when they are not sinning, they feel restricted. And there is no amount of gospel message you will preach to them. So the only thing you can use to get their attention is the message of fear. And that only holds them for a while. You know, have you, have you ever experienced you're driving on the expressway? And, and, and maybe, maybe someone is driving, you know, you, you're in that vehicle. And the person is going on, you know, top speed, just driving. And, and then maybe there's an accident somewhere. And everybody slows down. You know how, wow, 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 what caused this accident? Well, they didn't stop. Not everybody will stop. You know, some will, but everybody will just slow down. And like, oh God, have mercy. Oh God, have mercy on them. Oh God, save them. You know, make, make a prayer and stuff like that. And then for the next three, five minutes of that journey, so the driver will be like, he's under control now. But then after a while, he gets back to himself. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Now, you must have experienced what I'm talking about. Now, what happened? Just that moment of soberness, and then he gets back to his real self. You see that now? So, people who are born of the devil, they, that's their nature. So, when you preach, you know, you know in those days when we were uh, much, much younger, um, uh, the, there's um, um, people who go, this projector crusade then, and then they show these movies, Born in Hell, and, 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 and when... Nowhere to run. Remember all those movies? Praise God. And they play those movies. And people go, ha! Hey! I don't want to burn in hell. If you don't want to burn in hell, come out now and give your heart to Christ. Many people got born again under such circumstances. But it didn't last long. See, that was just a moment because they saw something. And fear came to that. That's the thing. The gospel is not a message of fear. It's good news. So if you trap people in fear, one day they will get bold and they will go back to themselves. Praise God. So we, we tell the truth because it's the truth and it's the truth that will make you free. So everything in scripture, we look at it from the place of truth. We don't try to paint it. So, I was telling you that I've been looking at Jacob's life and how much Jacob enjoyed or manifested the love of God. And it began from the moment he met God. Now, Jacob met God that night when, when he had a dream, sleeping with a stone now, oh, can you just imagine <laughs> with a stone as his pillow? All the while he was in his father's house, he had no encounter with God. 
No. And then we, we find Jacob. Maybe we should look at that scripture. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Genesis. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Genesis chapter 28. And verse 10. Now, I want you to look at this. Now, Jacob went from Beersheba and went towards Haran. So he knew where he was going to. Remember, his father had told him where to go. You can see that in the previous verses, the same chapter. Um, we can read it from verse 1, but, but I, I want to make um, dwell on where we're emphasizing. So, verse 11. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head. And he laid down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed. Take note. He dreamed. And behold, a ladder was set up on the earth and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending from that ladder. Right? And, and verse 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it. So he knew, he recognized in that dream that the Lord stood above the ladder. That's up in heaven, right? And said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. And the land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, and to the south. And in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now take note of verse 15. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. See what God said to him. I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done that, until I have done what I have spoken to you. Now take note of this. God made this promise to him and guess what? It happened in a dream. Now why did God introduce himself to him first? That I am the God. So he saw a being in that dream. And that being said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Now, that's why I said this was his first encounter with God. Whenever we have encounters with God, both those first encounter with God, he introduces himself. Now, God here was introducing himself as a father. Okay? Yeah, as a father. Now, that's the first introduction you have with God. If you've not recognized him, if you've not been introduced to him as a father, uh, then you've not meet, met him yet. No, you haven't. Praise God. You haven't met him yet. This is the first thing. That's what even the scripture says. When the spirit of God comes into our heart, he brings that sonship mentality whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now, that is the first revelation you must have of God. I say, ah, the first time God appeared to me, he appeared with his stern face. If you try, now that's not God you met, right? <laughs> it's God. No, no, no. Maybe you met an angel that was warning you from an evil you were intending to do. But God's revelation is revelation of love. So now you see in this script, in these scriptures we just read that God visited Jacob and he visited him in love. Okay? He visited him in love. Now, I was telling you something earlier. That Adam and Eve sinned. And God showed up and he was communicating with them. It was their response that determined what they got. Not the fact that they ate the fruit. The same thing with Cain. Cain, after killing Abel, God still visited him. God was still talking to him. It was his response that made him get what he got. You see that? Now, if he had responded differently, you know the story. Where is your brother? 
Am I my brother's keeper? Ah, but the, the voice of your brother is crying out to me. Why didn't God just say, Cain, 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 you have killed your brother and I know. And because of that, this is what I'm going to do to you. Why would God ask him first? God wanted to hear his response. It is your response. Jesus said it. By your words, you shall be justified. By your words, you shall be condemned. That's how simple it is. Look at the life of David, the whole Bathsheba story. See that? And when the prophet came to David and said, Sir, you have sinned. This is what you have done. What was David's response? Ah, I have sinned. I have done a terrible thing. And God showed him mercy. God showed him mercy so much that it appeared. Now, this, this is in line with what I was telling you before. God showed David so much mercy. It now had appeared as though but marrying Bathsheba was one of the, not one, was actually the best decision David ever made in life. Yeah. He said, how? You look at the life of Jesus. This is, this is amazing. So you look at the life of Jesus and then you, you, in the book of Matthew and in the book of Luke, you now trace the genealogy of Jesus, okay? Now in tracing the genealogy of Jesus, you, you have to, um, the Bible actually gave us two genealogies of Jesus. One through Joseph, right? And that's the one you find in the book of Matthew. Through Joseph. So he began until he got to Abraham. Then the other genealogy is through Mary. So he began with Mary, her father, and then it went up, on up until Abraham and God. But then now when you study that genealogy, you're going to realize something very amazing. And this couldn't have been a coincidence. What happened? David, the two genealogy of Jesus, ended or merged in David. And when you say merged in David, I'm talking about Bathsheba's womb. So Bathsheba gave birth to Solomon and she had five children actually. So she gave birth to Solomon and then another one called Nathan. Now, Nathan is where uh, Mary, if you trace the genealogy, you trace it to, to, from Nathan all the way, or from Mary, all the way to Nathan, okay? Now, when you trace the genealogy of Joseph, it goes all the way to Solomon. So, how can this be? When we say Jesus was the seed of David, I mean, there was no mistake. It's actually the seed of David. And then you find out the husband or the father and suppose the supposed father and mother of Jesus all both came from the same womb and which womb this woman that was involved in an adulterous act and the mother of her husband you see that now now I'm saying because of David's response he received mercy from the Lord Praise God. And say, hey, but, but, but he was still judged. Oh, that's another day's talk. Praise <laughs> God. Well, we'll look at that sometime. You know, how, what God said and the judgment that came to them. We'll look at that some other time. But, but get what I'm saying. His response. Everyone's response is what determines what happens to him. So now we go back to Joseph. Jacob, excuse me. We go back to J Jacob. And we see his response. Now I read to you all God said to him, right? Now, verse 16. And Jacob, Genesis 28, verse 16. And Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And my time is up. Praise God. Now, thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray. I'm taking this thing gradually so that you will understand and be grounded in this. And in between, if the Holy Spirit inspires me to, 
veer off. It's because of you. It's because of you. So take everything. Now go study this for yourself with, with what I've shared with you. And, and I pray the Lord give you understanding. But we're going to continue from here tomorrow. Praise God. Father, I thank you. That your glory is being revealed through us. There is the great manifestation of your love in our lives today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.